time to talk Pokemon. Hi guys, welcome to P-Myth Gaming. Last week we got a ton of new Pokemon Sword and Shield information. And unfortunately, the most exciting announcements turned out to not be quite accurate. Uh, and that's kind of knocked the wind out of my sails so far as my excitement for the game is concerned. Game Informer have a huge Pokemon blowout this month where they've revealed a whole bunch of intel about the upcoming games, as well as holding interviews with some of the developers. On a positive note, director Junichi Masuda revealed that the Pokemon cut from the game will be appearing in later iterations. Good news for those fans a bit miffed about their omission. But it's the other two major news stories that have come from the coverage that have left me kind of deflated. First off, director Shigeru Omori expressed how the team felt like expressing turn-based battles in their ultimate form, rather than rethinking the core battle mechanic entirely. Okay, so I'm not overly disappointed by this. The core battle mechanic with the four move slots, something else they thought about changing before leaving it alone, it is the very essence of Pokemon's DNA. Changing that up would have changed the very core of what Pokemon is, and undoubtedly would have left some fans, how should we say, less than happy. That said though, if Dynamaxing or Gigantamaxing is supposed to be the ultimate form of turn-based battles, then frankly, Game Freak could do with expanding their imaginations a little. I played Pokemon Sword and Shield earlier this year and got to try out the new Dynamaxing battle mechanic. Truth be told, not only is it not the ultimate form of turn-based battles, but it kinda left me underwhelmed. It sure looks impressive and the animations are very pretty, but functionally, it didn't make a whole lot of difference. My regular sized Grookey was still packing a punch against my opponent's Dreadnought and dealing some impressive damage by virtue of being super effective. And he managed to take three huge hits from it before he fainted, so there wasn't really a huge advantage to being Dynamaxed. This kind of took the shine off the whole gimmick. If Dynamaxing doesn't allow you to lay waste to whoever's pitched against you, or if it doesn't strike fear into your heart the moment an enemy opts for it, then it's just a few flashy animations that don't really change battling at all. The biggest disappointment from this news though is the one that played out over a couple of days. The big headline announcement was that Pokemon Sword and Shield would no longer have the traditional 8 gyms for players to conquer. Instead, the Galar region would play home to no fewer than 18 gyms spread across both major and minor leagues. I love this announcement! Finally we had something new and exciting that wasn't just gimmicky battle mechanics. Having multiple gyms across numerous leagues sounded awesome, and apparently Game Informer reported that these gyms, the promotion and relegation mechanic, took place each year, raising the possibility of there being a time aspect to the game too. Frankly, I should have known better. A couple of days later, the Pokemon Company issued a clarification, stating that within the game's lore there are 18 gyms that move between leagues. This explains why players will challenge different gyms in Sword than they will in Shield. But, so far as the actual play is concerned, they'll only be tackling the traditional 8. Frankly, I don't know why this was surprising. It's been pretty obvious that Game Freak have shirked the opportunity to kind of reinvent or rethink Pokemon with its first home console release. Pokemon Let's Go was fun and a great remake of the original games. But I sincerely believe that the reason we got that game last year was to give the developer time to really sink their teeth into a brand new take on the franchise. They had an opportunity to really knock our socks off with Sword and Shield, but it doesn't look like they've taken it. Frankly, Gen 8 looks pretty much exactly the same as the previous 7 generations, at least as far as the core gameplay goes. There's a bunch of monsters to find, 8 gyms to challenge, and a minor nuisance to take down somewhere along the way too. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe the final game will have something interesting and unique to tell within the game's narrative. But to be honest, Game Freak have shown us absolutely nothing to suggest that they've rethought or willing to try anything even remotely risky. Like, at all. I guess we'll wait and see. The games will undoubtedly sell shed loads after all. It is Pokemon. But I just hope that Game Freak don't use that as an excuse to rest on their laurels and not rethink Pokemon going forward. They've got a real opportunity now that the franchise is on a home console. All they need is a little imagination. Thanks very much for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about Pokemon Sword and Shield and whether or not you're disappointed by the kind of lack of new things that they've shown so far. If you enjoyed this video, there's tons more such as this one. And if you like that, you can always subscribe to so you never miss another episode. 
This show goes out every Friday, but we've got tons of other stuff on the YouTube channel, such as reviews and and rundowns and all sorts of kind of things. Go and check it out. Also, be sure to check out the NintendoVillage.com for news articles, features, reviews, podcasts, shows, the full shebang. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you all next week.